It began as a whisper, science a flash of information that could not have been fabricated. One single point of light streaked across the void faster than any previous record of human hands or machines. The figures were wrong when they arrived. Impossibly wrong. Software flagged it as an error. Analysts double-checked, triple-checked. But the anomaly only grew sharper, clearer and deniable. Something came into our solar system from the darkness, from the depths of interstellar space. And it wasn't just passing by. It was necessary. It had a course. It was timed well. This was 3E, the fastest and most enigmatic visitor our species has ever known. As we now decipher its narrative, you'll see why researchers across the world no longer refer to it as an object. They're giving it a name something else, something engineered. And before we dive deeper into this mystery, make sure to subscribe to stay connected to stories that aren't ready for the world to hear. Because what you're about to learn may be erased from public view as quickly as 3E itself vanished. It was just a blur at first a gleaming dot moving at a rate that ridiculed our understanding of the universe's motion. The Atlas telescope identified the system at the end of June. The goal, nearly for miles per second over 150,000 miles per hour faster than anything humankind has ever launched into space. All by itself, this would have been astonishing. But the more scientists dug, the odder it became. This was not a random flurry of a comet or rock caught in the cosmic currents. Something about this was different straight and smooth its path almost surgical. Observatories recalculated its location, and they remained speechless. This was not scattered debris from some nearby star, traced in reverse. Its path led to the galactic center, a region so distant that even light takes more than 20,000 years to reach us. This indicated that 3E had crossed the galaxy and altered, and changed, and challenged to arrive here now this moment, this century. That timing, this orbit, was too perfect to dismiss. The first anomaly was speed. Its trajectory was the second. Natural interstellar visitors behaved predictably, bending under the pull of gravity wells the planets and the sun. However, 3E did not sway. It resisted. It glided through the solar system as if the laws of celestial mechanics didn't apply. It cut a perfect line, avoiding large, bizarre gravitational traps. Models failed. Forecasts were wrong. It didn't drift like a rock in a current. It moved like a vessel choosing its own course. Even more troubling, its path wasn't a simple flyby. It aimed directly through the orbital region of the Earth neither past nor around it. Scientists began to whisper the one word no one wished to speak out loud, navigation. As its trajectory changed and more secrets emerged, NASA made the extraordinary decision to pivot the James Webb Space Telescope away from distant galaxies and direct it toward the incoming visitor. The infrared instruments of Webb are capable of detecting the smallest amount of heat in the coldest corners of the cosmos. Scientists' hearts raced when they saw what Webb saw. This wasn't a frozen rock reflecting sunlight in a haze. It was generating heat. Three remained cool in some places even when exposed to the entire sun while other regions heated rapidly and maintained that temperature long after neighboring areas had cooled. That's not how things in nature behave. Space rocks don't choose how to absorb or release heat. This was planned thermal regulation at a level far beyond anything known to naturally occur in deep space. Day after day, the data remained consistent. Some portions reflected heat like advanced insulation. Others soaked it up like solar cells hints at onboard systems or energy management. Comets can melt down. Asteroids may retain heat, but none display modular temperature control that is selective. This wasn't geology. This was design. One thermal analyst whispered to colleagues, we're not looking at a rock. We are examining a system. And systems don't happen by accident. They are designed. The surfaces confirmed it. High-resolution imaging from Hubble and the world's most powerful ground-based observatories showed reflections clean and in damage that defied belief. Interstellar space should have scarred any surface traveling for tens of thousands of years with micrometeorites, cosmic dust, and radiation. Yet not here. Massive portions of three reflected light like polished metal sending back signals with measurable precision. Even more unsettling were the shapes. In the middle of the typical curves of comets and asteroids were straight, sharp edges, lines, and symmetrical pattern structures that do not arise from erosion or fragmentation but from construction. This did not occur by chance in nature. This involved geometry. 
Light investigation revealed patterns that were consistent and repeated across these regions, suggesting panels, shells, or arrays components of a larger structure. A number of observatories affirmed the same results independently. No shadows. No optical illusions. This was present. And for something that had crossed the galaxy, the lack of degradation was impossible. You're not looking at something broken down by time, one optical engineer said quietly. You're looking at a product designed to last. Physics couldn't explain even its spin. Most space rocks fall without warning, but the three eyes rotated perfectly stable. Its axis didn't drift. Its turn rate remained constant, even as it neared the sun where solar forces should have caused the rotation's irregularities it locked in place like a gyroscope. Even more troubling, its orientation appeared to follow the Earth's movement. Reflective surfaces, thermal signatures, and later its beam all remained facing our planet's projected position in the world. It turned only slightly to remain focused as though it were watching. Comets have no aim. Asteroids don't rotate with exactness. However, this spacecraft had no visible thrusters or gas jets. Something was suggested by this smooth rotation concealed within an internal control mechanism that adjusted itself, preserving direction with stunning accuracy. It's like watching a satellite track a moving target, one astronomer said, except it's not ours. The more in-depth the data became, the harder it was to categorize. It was beginning to look like a craft. The course followed corrections. Natural phenomena release gas near the sun, producing small random nudges, but three eyes path deviations were timed, deliberate, and subtle, for efficiency without visible emissions or thrust. This was propulsion, but not one we were aware of. We couldn't tell what it was that was pushing it, one orbital analyst claimed, but clearly something was. That alone ruled out natural processes. The Kai wasn't going anywhere. It was directing. It moved through solar streams and wind. NASA's instruments picked up subtle, unusually electromagnetic signals but structured. At first dismissed as noise, the pulsing rhythms were regular and repeating, consistent across multiple monitoring stations. These were not accidental spikes. They reminded me of transmissions. Cometary electromagnetic emissions occur but weakly and sporadically. This was distinct. It was consistent. It shifted frequencies in the manner of an encoded signal tuning itself. Various researchers considered it to be communication, navigation, or internal system control. Others warned it might be an attempt to interface with the electromagnetic fields of Earth's environment. It's not background radiation here, a radio astronomer asserted. This is a transmission from something designed to transmit. Then, in late September, the phenomenon peaked. As Earth moved into three-way alignment with the eye's projected course, telescopes circling the world captured the moment it released a narrow line of light. It wasn't diffuse or scattered. It was small, aimed, and it was clearly aimed at Earth. The beam remained steady, securing our position, following us as if directing us by a targeting method. Radio and infrared telescopes confirmed it wasn't just observable light. The beam moved with structured electromagnetic properties and modulated like encoded data. The beam held for nearly an hour, then vanished not faded, not scattered. It immediately turned off. Then there was silence. No more signals. No shifts in course. No emissions. As quickly as it appeared, it was absent. The world expected answers. Silence came in its place. Agencies that had been sharing date NASA, ESA, and others pulled back. Public updates stopped. The live feeds stopped working. Vague data replaced tracking data. Scientists became unavailable. Independent journalists noticed the shift immediately. FOIA requests were delayed or rejected. Telescope time proposals were quietly denied. International observatories released near-identical public statements with eerily coordinated language. This was information management not for clarity, but to keep things contained. By each available metric thermal control, surface geometry, stability during rotation, electromagnetic activity, as well as a planned beam three eyes wasn't behaving like a comet or asteroid. It was behaving like a craft. 
A system with subsystems built for intelligence, stability, and endurance. Whether it came to keep an eye on us, to warn us, or to do something else entirely remains unknown. However, the silence that ensued is more audible than the beam itself. Additionally, as you read this, keep in mind that such mysteries are common. Don't make it public for too long. Subscribe to stay connected because when Three Eyes returns or when something else like it arrives you'll want to know before the silence descends once more.